Uh, Jeff, I wanted to ask you, um, I believe you've been writing publicly, uh, like on a blog, since you were maybe a teenager, at least close to it. And so by now, I think the pages stretch over 3,000 3, pages. You do the podcast that I mentioned. And so I just was curious about your journey and why you decided to learn so publicly, uh, share your knowledge publicly. I know I've learned a lot over the years. I'm just curious if you could talk about that journey. Um, well, I, I dropped out of college and started blogging just to have something to do all day. Because, you know, um, so it, it, there was no way to make money off of it or anything. Uh, getting started, but it was just, I was already into investing, I had been for years picking my own stocks since um, I started in high school, and uh, so it was something to do, and I really enjoyed writing, and uh, it was an exciting time, this was 2005, uh, it was pretty hard to put together a podcast, I put together a podcast which is very amateurish compared to what we have now, but uh, that was a new concept, and I had to get like podcasting for dummies or something, you know, um, because there weren't many podcasts, there weren't even many blogs, and there were very, very few investing blogs back then. Yeah, interesting. And I'm just curious, to this day, does writing still affect your investment process, either what you write publicly or privately? Is that part of your investment process? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's the best way to know if you want to buy a stock or not. Um, I even have written some things that I've decided not to publish. I've written them mostly for myself, and then I liked the idea, and I felt it was too small, and it would cause a problem if I, I published it, um, competition for buying it, you know. But it's still, so it's purely the work of doing it that actually helps. Um, so I'll even do it in cases where I, you know, it's not for publication.